I was going to go visit her and Ruth this week, so because they're both at Avalon. So, yep. I haven't been out to see her either. I should do that double when I go. It's easier just to do both while you're there. Yeah. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Trinity Presbyterian Church. It is great to have all of you worshiping with us today. And whether you're joining us for worship in person or online, we hope this time of worship is a blessing to you and your family. The rose on the sanctuary this morning is celebrating the birth of Eloise Giovanna Johnson. And she was born to Tyler and Brittany, and we are so excited about this new baby in the life of our church family. And so congratulations to the Johnson family. Please note the office is closed this week. Amy Covert's on vacation visiting family. But if you need anything, email me or call my cell phone, and I'd be happy to help. I can't believe school is about to start, and neither can our teachers and parents. Next week is the blessing of students and teachers and bus drivers and school leaders, so we hope you'll join us. And now let us continue to prepare our hearts for worship.
Amen. We are grateful to the ministry of the Community Garden for the beautiful sunflowers this morning. They are fresh from our community garden. And so don't forget that's there. Um, don't forget to help yourself to some delicious food if you do not have a garden at your home. And don't forget all the ways we are blessing our community, turning that barren lot into a place of resurrection and life. Sounds like Jesus in our community to me. Please join with me in our call to worship. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast that mysteriously makes our bread rise, a treasure in a field, a tiny mustard seed that grows into a great tree and the birds nest in its branches. The kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea that caught fish of every kind, the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is old and what is new. Could the kingdom of heaven be among us today through scripture, prayer, music, and song? Let us worship the Lord. Please stand. You may be seated. This morning we're looking at a passage in Matthew that is traditionally called the Beatitudes. You might recognize them as we read them in the prayer of confession. This prayer of confession is based on the Beatitudes from the message translation and just gives us a different way to hear God's word to us today. So join me in the responsive prayer of confession. Um, it's a prayer of calling and confession and I will begin. When Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed a hillside. Those who were apprenticed to him, the committed, climbed with him. Arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and taught his climbing companions. This is what he said. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. You're blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. You're blessed when you're content with just who you are. No more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves proud owners of everything that can't be bought. You're blessed 
when you've worked up a good appetite for God. He's food and drink in the best meal you'll ever eat. You're blessed when you care. At the moment of being careful, you find yourselves cared for. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. You're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. You're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. The persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. Not only that, count yourselves blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit me. What it means is that the truth is too close for comfort and they are uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens. Give a cheer even. For though they don't like it, I do. And all heaven applauds. And know that you are in good company. My prophets and witnesses have always gotten into this kind of trouble. For God's grace in our callings and God's grace in our confession, we give thanks today. So hear the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Please stand. And now in the tradition of those who have gone before us, let us proclaim what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. After our scripture reading this morning, we will observe a few moments of silence as an opportunity to listen for the word or phrase that God has brought to us through this scripture passage today. This morning's first scripture reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. Listen for the word of the Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus 
a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished, I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to Jesus, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Amen. chimes of time bring out the news another day is through someone slipped and fell was that someone you you may have longed for added strength your courage to renew do not be disheartened for I bring hope to you. It is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, no secret what God can do.
Amen. We all needed that word this morning. We are grateful to the ministry of each one of you who were able to make a pie or a cake or drop something off and to our mission ministry for hosting the ice cream social in Mercer on Friday night. $630 was raised not for our church, but to give back to the community in support of the community bandstand. So way to go, Trinity. Way to just keep being a generous blessing in the life of our community. And it's always good for people in the community to be able to bump into people from our church and say, hey, tell me more about your church. And thanks for the good stuff you're doing. And so thanks for your presence and thanks for your time. And thanks to all of you who have a ministry of baking in our midst. Thanks for your generosity. Please stand. Holy God, in the midst of this beautiful summer weekend, may we slow down, take a breath, and give thanks for all of the blessings you have piled into our lives this week. Thanks for the opportunity to give some of those blessings back to you and your kingdom. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Loving God, we have gathered here this morning to pause, to take a breath in the middle of a beautiful summer, in the midst of a busy week, a week where we have been getting ready for school, where we have been moving from one thing to the next, where we have been mowing and fixing stuff at the house and harvesting garden produce and mulching as fast as we possibly can. And so this morning, we join the psalmist in a selah. We take a breath in the midst of this life to pay attention to what you are doing in our lives, and in our world. We give thanks today, O oh God, for the good things we name before you in our hearts today. We give thanks for the gift of new life, however it finds us, and give you thanks this morning especially for the gifts of baby Eloise, baby Elena, and baby Elwyn in our lives. Bless them and their families. God, we come to you this morning with adoration, remembering that you are our bright morning star, that you are the Lion of Judah, that you are our creator, but also our friend. Hear our quiet words of praise for you this morning. Holy God, we come to you in confession because we try to be good people and we mess up all the time. And so thank you, O oh God, for your forgiveness and the opportunity to start again every day. God, we pray for others. We pray for the leaders in our government that they would make wise decisions. We pray for those who are persecuted today. We remember clergy in Ukraine. We remember people in our own country persecuted for standing up for what is right. 
Lord, teach us all to be peacemakers, but passionate peacemakers at that. We remember Christians around the world who are persecuted for their faith. God, we pray for people in our church family that need your healing touch, as well as the names of people we brought here in our hearts. We pray again for Wilma this morning and ask that you be with her in her rehab, that she might be stronger every day. Hear the prayers for the names and faces, the worries we brought in here this morning. Be with everyone facing a test result today, every family battling cancer. Be with everyone recovering from a medical procedure and those anticipating one. Be with everyone who hurts this morning. And finally, God, we pray for ourselves. Give us the things we need from you this week, those things we ask for from you this morning. Help us all take a breath, and then another and another, breathing in that same Holy Spirit that you used to breathe the first breath of life into Adam and Eve. May we feel that breath in us this morning, your life within us, and may it change us and make us new and give us strength for the days ahead. We pray all of this in Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please remain seated for our hymn. So we're going to hear the words of Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12 this morning. This is the NRSV version. Listen for the word of the Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Let us pray. Holy God, we ask for eyes to see and ears to hear your will and your way for us this day. It's in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we pray. Amen. 
Nicodemus, the guy we talked about in the first scripture reading from John, was a guy who had it all together. He had it all together. He had a sweet ride, a gray donkey GTO convertible, of course. He had a delightful family that looked so good in matching robes on the holiday Passover card that they would send their mailing list of, you know, like a hundred of their closest friends. Nicodemus had a fantastic job because who wouldn't want to be a Pharisee? And he had a sweet hipster beard, at least in my imagination. And so Nicodemus had it all. This guy was definitely um, what people in my generation would say is hashtag blessed. He was blessed. He had it all together, the family, the job, the car. He was well respected in his community. Life was good. No way. It was hashtag blessed. And so what is this guy who has it all together, who is respected in his community, who is a religious leader among his people, what is he doing? Sneaking off to Jesus' house at night. Apparently, Nicodemus had some questions about God. And so Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night. It's a really important detail in the Gospel of John. Why does he go at night? He goes because we're told he is, quote, a leader amongst the people. And the Pharisees, the people that Nicodemus hangs out with every day, they do not believe that Jesus is the Messiah. But apparently, Nicodemus does. And so he goes at night. So no one can see him, you know, as he's just hanging out with Jesus, asking some questions from God about God. And so Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night. Nicodemus says, um, what do you mean, Jesus, when you say that Everyone who wants to be a part of the kingdom of heaven needs to be born again. What is that about Jesus? I mean, biologically, how in the world does that work? And Jesus talks to Nicodemus about baptism and this person of the Trinity called the Holy Spirit. And finally, Nicodemus says, how could that be? And Jesus said, you're a rabbi. You're a teacher of Israel and you don't understand these things? But who can blame Nicodemus? The things of faith, the things of the divine in our life, they are mysterious at best. And so Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night with questions about God. He comes to God to learn more about God. But I don't think the conversation ended there. I think this was just the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Do you think Nicodemus saw Jesus again another time? More conversations at night? Maybe they went to coffee somewhere. Who knows? I think the conversation continued. I think this was just one of many conversations between Nicodemus and God. And so was Nicodemus there when Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mount? It's totally possible. I mean, why not? When we look at the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew gives a prologue to this long passage that we read this morning, these sayings of Jesus. And in the prologue, Matthew tells us that Jesus had all these followers, so many people, they gathered to hear him preach. And they came from Judea and Samaria and across the Jordan and the Decapolis. All these people came from all of these places to hear Jesus preach this Sermon on the Mount. And so Nicodemus could be one of them. And I can picture Nicodemus in my head. There he is listening to Jesus because we know the Pharisees and the Sadducees also followed Jesus around. And I can see Nicodemus there with his notepad, taking it all in, writing down his questions for Jesus that perhaps they're going to talk about later that day. So Jesus says this, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. 
Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And Nicodemus is like, yeah, pure in heart. Yes, righteousness. I'm all for it. And then, you know, blessed are the peacemakers, Jesus says, for they will be called children of God. And Nicodemus is like, preach it. Yes, peacemaking. I love it. Pure in heart. Absolutely. And then Jesus continues, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Ooh. Okay. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And Nicodemus is thinking, I, I don't want to be sad. This does not sound good. Jesus continues, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And now Nicodemus' his head is spinning because he's thinking, we're about winning in my family. Okay, we are winners. What is this meek thing? And Jesus says, blessed are you if you are persecuted for my sake, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. And poor Nicodemus, he is beside himself at this point. He's thinking, Jesus, these are things that I try so hard to not have in my life. Like every day I try not to be sad. Every day I try not to be meek. Every day I try not to be poor in spirit. And you're telling me that mine is the kingdom of heaven even when these things happen? That is some hard news. I'm with Nicodemus on that. There are good things in this passage. Pure heart, merciful, peacemaker. But there are some hard things in this passage, things that we all try to avoid every day. And so what is Jesus saying in this passage? How can we understand what God's word is to us this morning? And we have to start by looking at where we stand in the world. So when Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers, for you shall see God. Let's think about what it means to be blessed in our lives. So for those of us from a younger generation, when we hear blessed, we think of this. Hashtag blessed. Hashtag blessed is what you post on social media. You put a picture of your kid or your spouse on your anniversary and you add the hashtag, hashtag blessed because you want people to know how blessed you are. But here's the tricky thing. In our culture, most of the time when you're posting hashtag blessed, you're posting it about something you've achieved or something you possess in this life. So most of the time when people post on social media, hashtag blessed, they're talking about something they possess or something they achieved. So it's like, look at my Thor-like biceps, hashtag blessed. Or look at my new air fryer. Not only does it make french fries, it also makes bread and pizza, or it calls for a delivery service if food doesn't work out well that night and it just, it phones for dinner. It just phones in for dinner, right? Hashtag blessed. You, you're with me on this, right? Most of the time when people post hashtag blessed, unless it's their children, which is great, unless it's their anniversary, fantastic, they're talking about what they achieved or what they have obtained. And so it starts to feel like it's more about them than it is about God. If you go on Facebook and you search hashtag blessed, if you look for this, brace yourself if you do it. I'm just, here's your warning. Hashtag blessed on Facebook 12 million times. This has been used. Instagram, 144 million times people have posted hashtag blessed. Here's the picture of me and my family on our vacation on the mega yacht. Hashtag blessed. You get what I'm saying? It's pretty much a lot of the time about what they have achieved or what they have compiled in life. It's a lot about them and only maybe a little bit about God, but pretty much about them. Hashtag blessed. It's a thing for people of the younger generation. Now, maybe you don't resonate with that. Maybe you are a fan of one of the Crayleys' favorite, music, or favorite movies, White Christmas. In White Christmas, we join Bing Crosby and Rosemary Clooney as they are up late one night having liverwurst sandwiches and milk, and they are singing 
about when they're worried and they can't sleep. They count their blessings instead of sheep. And they fall asleep counting their blessings. Okay, that one is kind of a prayer of thanksgiving. That's when we take out our gratitude journal and we list from God, about God, all the things we are thankful for. That, to me, feels a little bit more like thanking God for God's mercy and grace in our life. And so counting your blessings, okay, I can buy it. That's more about God and God's grace in our life. And so maybe you come from a count your blessings culture. Maybe you come from a hashtag blessed culture. But Jesus is not really talking about any of those particular things this morning. So hang with me on this today. Let's start with what does, what does it mean when we say the Beatitudes? So what is Jesus saying in this passage? This passage from Matthew 5 is called the Beatitudes. If you hang out around churchy people and they're talking about the Beatitudes and you're like, what attitude? It, nope, they're talking about Matthew 5. Why? Back in the day, the Bible was in Latin. That means you couldn't read the Bible unless it was in Latin, which Martin Luther and John Calvin helped to take care of. But you had to be educated to read the Bible because it was in Latin. And when it was in Latin, they used the word beatu at the beginning of every single line of this passage of scripture. Beatu means happy are those. Blessed are those, joyful, fortunate are those who. So if you were reading Matthew 5 and you looked at your Bible, you saw beatu, 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 and they turned it into a phrase. They said, oh, these are the beatitudes. The original Greek is makari or makarios, which makes me think of our friends Sarah and Victor makari. The meaning is the same, happy. Blessed are those, fulfilled are those, joyful are those. I think the best way to understand what this word means is if you know what shalom means in the biblical Hebrew. So when you say to someone, shalom, brother, you're not just saying peace. You're saying wholeness. May all the good things of God's life be yours. May you be complete. May you know peace beyond understanding. That's what this word means. Happy are those. It's saying joyful, peaceful, fulfilled, whole are those who are peacemakers. And so that's what Jesus is saying. And so what is Jesus really saying here? Jesus is saying whether you are a peacemaker or pure in spirit this morning, or whether you are meek and feeling persecuted today, the kingdom of heaven is yours. Whether you are feeling merciful or whether you are feeling sad, the kingdom of heaven is yours. And when we talk about persecution, absolutely we're prayerful for those who are persecuted for their faith around the world. But we can be persecuted in a whole lot of ways, including by an illness, by a mental illness, by a physical illness, by a difficulty our family is going through. Persecution comes in a lot of forms, but it hurts every time. And yet the good news of the gospel for us today is that on days we're feeling merciful and pure in heart and hungering and thirsting after righteousness, the kingdom of heaven is ours and God is with us. But on days we are feeling persecuted by something or just plain sad all the time, God is with us in those moments too. The kingdom of heaven is ours on those days too. Notice there's a present reality and a future promise in every single beatitude. Present reality, I'm feeling meek. I'm feeling pure in heart. I'm hungering and thirsting after righteousness. I'm sad. Future promise, for they shall see God. For they shall be called children of God. For the kingdom of heaven is yours. It's saying even when life is really tough, the promises of God are in play, even when you can't see it in that moment. And that what's, that's what makes us feel blessed. That's what makes us feel at peace. That's why we can have joy even when life is hard because the future promise that God has laid out on our lives is already in play in that moment even if we can't see it. And so blessed are you by kingdom standards if you are pure in heart and coming to church and seeking after righteousness and merciful to people around you and you are peacemaking 
But blessed also are you if your family is a mess right now. If you feel run over by life, if you are just sad all the time, the kingdom of heaven is yours too. Let us pray. God, we live in a culture of hashtag blessed. And we are blessed by our family. We are blessed by the friends and spouses in our lives. But most of the time, we're just bragging. Holy God, help us be people who count our blessings and live a life of thanksgiving for your grace and mercy. But most of all this morning, meet us where we are in the present moment and lay out those kingdom promises on our lives again today that whether we are feeling merciful or meek, help us remember that the kingdom of heaven is always ours on this day and always. Amen. Please stand and join with me in our final hymn. In kingdom terms, whether you're feeling pure in heart, thirsting after righteousness, merciful, or you are feeling sad all the time and run over by life and not like a winner today, the kingdom of heaven is yours every day, all the time, because we live in Christ. So go out into this world and go in peace and have justice let me try again, and go into this world and go in peace and have courage. Return no one evil for evil, but strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, care for those who suffer, love and serve the Lord in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and let all God's people say, Alleluia, Amen.
Uh-huh. Are you going to be home today? Yeah. Okay. Lori's going to some place.